Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's session around uh, SD WAN technologies and how Force Points Next Generation Firewall provides a different solution for building SD WAN and secure compliant networks. Just a bit of housekeeping we will uh, be taking question and answer if you can post them in chat and we will follow it up with those at the end of this today's session. Uh, presenting today are Mark Collins from Net Protocol, who is our lead firewall engineer uh, based around this solution, and uh, John Pease from Forcepoint, who will be covering off the overall technology piece. For those who don't know, Net Protocol provide professional services and infrastructure solutions to legal practices throughout the UK from very small to very large scale businesses. And SD1 really is forming a key part of many of those businesses' strategies moving forward to both build secure worlds and for WAN connectivity. To get this moving, I will hand over to John Pease, who will give an overview of Forcepoint and the technology. Thank you there, Mike. So hi, everybody. Um, as, uh, as Mike said, my name is John Pease. Um, I'm one of the network security engineers working for Forcepoint. So if we look at who Forcepoint is, so Forcepoint is an amalgamation of a number of companies. Um, we started off as uh, WebSense, <clears throat> then we were acquired by Raytheon, and for a while we were known as Raytheon WebSense. Um, and then after that, we acquired the firewall business from um, Intel or McAfee, um, and that's where the StoneSoft um, Next Generation Firewall came from, um, and at the same time, we also acquired a, the Sidewinder business from McAfee. So the Next Generation Firewall, as, as we know it today, is actually a combination of both the Stonesoft Next Generation Firewall and the uh, firewall from uh, the Sidewinder side of the McAfee business. Um, an interesting point here is, um, the Stonesoft firewall, originally Stonesoft um, did the um, clustering for, um, for Checkpoint before Checkpoint had clustering included in their, um, their product set. Um, a few years later, or a year or so later, we bought um, Skyfence, which is a um, cloud access security brokerage um, product from um, Imperva. Um, and more recently, we bought um, UEBA, so User Entity Behavior Analytics platform from uh, Red Owl Analytics. And so all of these companies together form what we now know as Forcepoint. Um, the UEBA side of the business um, was to take us more towards um, understanding how users interact with the data and the risk that that interaction with the data poses to our security posture. If we look at the distributed networks um, that are coming up now, um, there is a, a drive to use um, cloud applications or software as a service, so Office 365. And with that move to uh, utilize Office 365 and access anywhere, we have a, a requirement to ensure that the application performs well. So we're looking more, rather than backhauling internet connections back into the data center, then back out to Office 365, moving to a more direct to cloud network topology where users go directly to Office 365 rather than coming back to the data center. We're also looking at moving um, work loads into the cloud. Um, so we've got to be able to support virtual deployments and ground to cloud connectivity in the forms of VPNs. With all of this movement of into the cloud, we've got to balance that access with our existing compliance, the ability to segment networks and expose services securely. And on top of that, we're looking at consolidating services. So where we used to have 
uh, dedicated intrusion prevention systems, next generation firewalls, um, web and cloud. We're looking at amalgamating some of those services. And SD-WAN, or Software Defined Wide Area Networking, is being included in that security service consolidation. So the ability to be able to provide SD-WAN um, actually on the firewall and provide it secure connectivity and direct to the cloud access, which is the subject of today's presentation. So if we look at how we, the architecture is um, scalable, we can have physical firewalls in clusters or single nodes in headquarters, regional offices, branch offices. We can also have um, firewalls deployed as scale sets in Azure and AWS and private clouds, um, but also virtualized in the form of N uh, VMware um, and KVM to protect those virtual assets within the data center. And the way we achieve connectivity is we just connect them directly to the internet using multiple commodity broadband links and then uh, provide that connectivity to each other over using secure VPNs using Active Active. In terms of the management of all of this, you need to have something that scales well. Um, in terms of management, you need a centralized platform that can provide that visibility um, and distributed uh, management capability. Um, so within the, the platform, we have a security management center or the SMC, um, and that also has a web portal server that uh, managed service providers can provide access to their customers. And um, Net Protocol offer multiple levels of service where you can um, effectively have um, some control over the firewall um, or, or just uh, instruct Net Protocol to make changes. Um, and so they will take care of most of that um, management overhead for you, um, but you can oversee what's um, what's being changed, etc. And so with that, I'm going to hand over to Mark, who's going to um, continue and talk to us about SD1. Okay, thanks, John. So um, I'm Mark Collins, uh, Firewall Lead at Net Protocol. Um, so what I want to do is um, talk about the first point next firewall or SD-WAN, as John mentioned. So first thing is, um, next gen firewall is, is more than just a firewall, really. Um, it's got lots of other enterprise class features and benefits. So what we're going to do now is look at specifically the, uh, the SD-WAN. So um, what is SD-WAN? Um, SD-WAN gives you control of your wide area network. So just, uh, that makes a bit more sense. So usually a third party provider would dictate your connectivity. So SD1 is a wide area network created with your devices to your specification. Um, so we're going to show you how you can achieve this with the force point next gen firewalls. So as the example we've got here, uh, this is a typical um, one using MPLS uh, fixed links in a private cloud. So each site there, A, B, C, and D example sites just uh, the single tunnel into the private cloud. Now, on top of this, um, with the private cloud, each site gen uh, usually needs a, an internet breakout per site. So when you take a into account, that can be uh, quite expensive. So expensive to run um, due to all the link costs. Okay, so another, another con of the traditional one um, is the lack of control you have over that network. Um, so it's usually managed by the third party who has to make the changes. So that, that control is out of your hands. The next problem with this traditional one structure, um, once you've made any kind of request, you then have to obviously wait for that change to take effect. You have a wait time in effect there. So if you've got, if you've got critical changes that need to be made to your network, that's out of your hands. And the last point on there, um, Usually, this configuration is not fault tolerant uh, with single points of failure directly into the cloud. So that's the traditional one structure. So what we're going to look at now is the SD, uh, SD1 structure. So if you're taking a quick look at the diagram there, um, 
Uh, each site's next gen firewall is being used uh, to establish a secure tunnel to each other site via a normal internet connection. So each site on that diagram has, has its own firewall that just uses a conventional internet connection, not a private uh, fixed line. And with that internet connectivity, it builds secure tunnels to each of the other sites. That's all done within the management console. There's no manual configuration. That's an automatic um, configuration. Okay, so that also means this is less expensive. Um, it uses the direct internet connectivity, which is less expensive to run. Um, also, if you think about it from a global point of view, different sites can run from different local providers, local uh, different internet providers. You're not tied to one overall overarching company managing those links. Um, so the other bonus is um, they're easy, uh, uh, easy to do, oh, sorry. Um, um, they're easy to deploy in remote offices. Um, so essentially, these firewalls, um, you can pre-configure, send to remote sites. Um, once they're there, they're automatically, automatically checking with the remote, um, with the central management server uh, for their configuration. So it's very easy to deploy. Okay. So the next pro we have here um, is the next gen firewall can use multiple links simultaneously for internet connectivity in general. Um, but these links can also be used as part of the SD1 um, for full resilience in case of a line failure. Um, so uh, each internet connection is essentially an endpoint that can be used by all other sites and endpoints. This results in a very high level of resiliency using just standard internet connectivity. So again, in the diagram there, we've got kind of a rough example, but each site that has more than one um, internet link, all of those links are available across all sites for all the secure tunnels. It's very, very resilient. Um, and then, um, as the traffic is running through the firewall already, um, you have full control over what goes over the SD1 and what breaks out onto the internet on that same link. Um, it's also possible to apply bandwidth control. So general branch internet access doesn't eat into critical SD1 bandwidth between sites. So full traffic management on all of those endpoints and all of those firewalls. So you can deem what goes down the SD1 and what is then allowed out onto the internet. So that's the high level overview. Um, so I want to show you a few screenshots of how that translates into the direct management of the, of the firewall. So we've got an example screenshot here. So in this screenshot, you can see each branch in the SD1. Um, so usually the, the, the one provider has these types of views. Uh, in this case, you, the user would have full visibility of con uh, and control. But again, if you wanted to, we'll come on to that on, on the next slide. Um, the console has real-time real stats and alerts allowing fast response should an issue arise. Uh, connection Health also allows one oversight to see where bandwidth or stability issues may be uh, an issue on the SD1. So again, if we take looking at the screenshot, you can see the amount of information you have at your fingertips. So if there is an issue on um, uh, any site connectivity, rather than having to deal with a third party um, to, to feed that information back to you, you've got it at your fingertips. Now, so with the extensive logging um, that comes with the next gen firewalls, you can have detailed reports that allow you to dig deep into the logs to show historic use of the SD1 with in depth data such as individual users and applications. So, in this example report um, snapshot here, we can see um, some examples of user stats per site, and then we can have also applications per site as well. Um, so, very powerful, lots and lots of information at your fingertips. So that's this kind of the, the, the argument for, for SD1, or the, 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 the many advantages and how you can do that with the force point next gen firewall. Um, so why would so why, why use next gen firewall as a service with net protocol? So there's, there's there's many advantages to this. So the first one is as a managed service, um, there's no upfront costs. So so opex not capex, subscription model uh, spreads the cost of that technology. Because so no training or staffing needed, we maintain the firewall and keep it up to date, which means no cost in IT uh, uh, training IT staff. Any changes needed can be actioned by us. 
Um, so that's that's the self explanatory. You, in turn, where there's no extra resource needed because we provide that resource as part of the key managed service. Um, best use of available technology. So, um, our, deploy, so our knowledge means that you get the best possible deployment, making the most of all the features of the next end, because there are a lot of enterprise class features in that technology. Um, and from, from day one, we'll ensure that um, it's running um, and utilizing all, all of those features uh, uh, to the best. Flexible access to the SMC. So flexible access to the sits in the management server. So essentially, if if you um, wanted to have full access, full rewrite access to all the policies and essentially manage that um, technology yourself, then that's fine, and, and we will work with you and we'll run it like that. If you just want to send through changes and don't actually want to get involved in um, the management of it, that is also fine. So we cater to, to any any requirement there. Um, or, or up and down that scale. Um, and we work with clients for the best deployment. So essentially, um, we work with you for the most secure policies with the best for you and your business requirements. So um, even though this is a technology that protects your business and your company, it's, it's, it's got to work for you as well. So we, we make sure that the best policies are in place to, kind of, to, to, to make the most of, of what you're trying to do within the business. And um, and that's it. So there's some contact details on the screen there. So if there's any um, requirement to actually see the SMC in action, uh, we can arrange kind of a one-to-one -one demonstration so you can see um, how, the, how it actually works, see some of the reports, see some of the, um, the, 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 the traffic in action. Um, so if you contact us um, there, um, we, can, uh, we can arrange that. And then uh, back over to Mike. Thank you very much, both. Mark and John for the run through of uh, the SD1 technology and some of the benefits to individual organizations. We will respond to the questions shortly. Uh, but for the end of this session, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Um, and if there is any further info or you'd like to discuss in more detail, either the technical, the security, or the commercial benefits, then please. Uh, get in touch and we'll come and see you. Thanks again.